Welcome to another build uh, at SNG here, and uh, this is going to be our in-depth on making or building the 2001 the Space Odyssey uh, Discovery <laughs> from uh, Mobius. This has been 50 years in the making, and I say that because uh, they have done lots of 2001 models in the past, but they never did this ship, and this is something I've been wanting for the longest time. Uh, and it's so cool to finally have it. Uh, it's, uh, what is it, about, I think, 40 inches long or so. It's not as big as I'd like it to be, but you know what? I'm very happy with it. And I'm gonna show you how to build this model, or at least how I'm gonna build this model, because it doesn't have an interior. I'm really shocked that they did not make an interior for this. Now, Paul Paragraphics makes a, a brass set for it that's very, very good. But I started thinking, you know, for as much as you're gonna see, past the one door open, which is what I'm gonna have, and the pod sitting out there, because this is the point where uh, Cure Delay goes out to try to get Gary Lockwood, who's tumbling in space, or should I say Dave Bowman goes after Frank Poole. Uh, so it's gonna be sitting there. So you'll be able to see Baston a little bit, so I just wanted some interior in there. So I basically did some sizing, some shaping, and started building um, an interior. And, and here's the ceiling. <laughs> For starters, and it's just styrene and some uh, um, chart tape. And uh, looking at the ceiling, looking, I have really good pictures of the set. I sort of uh, did my own approximation of it. And uh, so I've just sort of finished this. It's white and it's not very well light blocked. Uh, I, I'm going to need to do that as I, I can see now. I, you know, in fact, I should have hit it with some primer first. But what I'm gonna to do to fix this problem is I'm going to put some aluminum tape over it and then the game is over. I won't have a problem with, with uh, lighting again. This, this is great stuff, I really love it. Uh, you can't get any more uh, uh, opaque than aluminum tape. So I'm gonna just kind of stick it over here like so. It doesn't have to be pretty because it just has to block the light. And of course I have to cut open the window sections again, but that's okay. Now that window's so the lights. Those are the overhead lights. I'm going to do that. And you can scratch build your own, your own interior. There's no reason why you can't. I did it on the, uh, the first model I ever had of this ship was the uh, lunar models, which I still have, which survived uh, the Great Earthquake of 1994 in Northridge, sort of. It had a bookshelf come down on it and break its back, but I still have it. It's still in the showroom. And it was a nice model. I think that they did a really good job on it for a garage kit. Yeah, let's see, we're gonna get this cut here. So now, white blocked, but I have to cut these back out. This blade's a little, little on the dull side. You will not even be able to see these. Not. Uh, really, when when uh, once I get it inside the model, hopefully here I'll we'll get these cut out, and I'm going to put the frosted. I frosted some uh, some clear uh, plastic, PETG to be exact. I love PETG. It's a great. Ah, there we go. It's still white block. Yes, it is. That's going to be fine. This is going to take a while. Uh, we'll come back here in a minute and I'll show you putting in the uh, clear plastic and we'll see what this effect looks like. And then we'll move on to the, these sections in a minute. 
So now uh, I've got some uh, PETG, but you, know, you can use any kind of uh, plastic sheet for this. And I frosted it. So uh, we get a nice diffused look. And uh, I'm gonna put this over here, like so. I'll mark it. Yeah. It kind of works, as long as I do it from the inside. I just need to be in the ballpark. So I'm gonna cut this out to the inside line. So it's, because these parts fit rather perfectly inside the hole, hole, hole of the ship. I am just so stoked to be building this model. I mean, ever since I was a, a kid, I, uh, a 16 year old, that's a kid, in uh, high school, I wanted to have a model of the ship. And all they made was the moon bus and the, um, and the uh, Orion. So that'll light it up really nice and cast some really nice light inside the uh, pod bay from the actual locations. Now, I'm not gonna be able to glue this down very successfully, so I'm gonna use some more of this tape, uh, which really sticks good to uh, hold that down. So, uh, continuing on with the interior, uh, I'm learning a lot of things looking at the book. This book here, it's not a monolith, it's actually the making of Stanley Kubrick's 2001. It's got a lovely uh, outside jacket that goes on it, but this is a treasure trove of data. And one of the things I never realized is that these cutout areas here, which are these here, are open down here. We never saw this detail in the film. These are, it's lighted underneath the pods, and these are the rails, and the pods extend out on these little turntables. So this is actually recessed, which I have it. The reason it's black is to simulate this darker area underneath it. This is about all we did see in the film was, was this the way it is here. So this told me uh, a great deal about uh, what I'm doing with this. So, and, and how it fits in here and why I'm having a little bit of a problem getting this to go down as low as it's supposed to go because it didn't. It actually set up high like this, but these were open. So it uh, begs the question, uh, should I, cut those out and just have, have the, uh, the pods sitting up on the turntables? The answer is probably yes. So after all that, I'm probably gonna cut that out. But I wanted to show you what I was doing with the trim tape. Uh, actually, it's not trim tape. This is chart tape, and you can still get this stuff online. It was used for making marks uh, on paper, uh, on maps, and then you could remove it. You could you know, draw a line from here to there and uh, then remove it again. And this works really good for doing panel lines on, on models when you're scratch building them because you've seen me do it in the past. I would put this on and I would build up a ton of primer on it, sand it down until I could see the tape, pull the tape out, get this beautiful panel line uh, as opposed to doing scribing. So I wanted to add a little raised detail here. So I decided that it would be very cool to um, do that, then paint over it it doesn't stick very well, but once uh, you actually uh, put the paint over it, the paint will lock it down. I'm gonna put a little bit there. Uh, there's some raised areas looking at the pictures uh, as I have been from that book, which is how I got uh, my layout figured out for this, which took a lot of uh, printing and cutting and seeing if I could get it to fit and changing it and cutting it until I finally found a, 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 a top and a bottom would fit in there and they figured out the sides. Keep in mind that very few rivet counters are gonna call past that pod and see inside here. Especially those pesky judges that George is telling me about at Wonderfest, Jersey Fest, and all those kind of places. IPMS? 
Uh, well, yeah, that too. <laughs> okay, that's not quite to my liking, so I'm gonna kind of readjust it a bit here. Like so. And I think I'll do a little raised panel right along the side of the door here, just to give it some business. Okay, so this really bugs me, so I'm gonna remove it. It just isn't what I want exactly, so. Try to move that little piece there. There we go. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just take these over and paint them a bit Let's encapsulate all that. And I did cut the window open again, so I will be able to put the window back there. Uh, a flat white, it will be after I put it in the oven and, and dry it out. It's a nice hot summer day in the drying oven. I, I, I use a, a, a one of those air circulated ovens. Uh, what are they called? I can't remember. Uh, convection. convection which we used for years to run foam rubber in. And you can buy, I have three of them over there, and you can, you can get those, and they're great for drying, they're great for curing stuff because the temperature is even inside. So when I put this inside, they will dry very quickly. Uh, but you can see how that, just that little bit of raised detail really kind of sells it, gives it a, a nice look. You can see already here it's drying because it's on the uh, wood. <laughs> It's been a long day. Uh, so I'm gonna just, on this, I've been, remember I, it's stuck. So I'm just taking a little tiny piece sliver of plastic and, and I sprayed some of the same paint in there and uh, inside of a cup. And now those damaged areas are now repaired. So I'm gonna put this in the oven, dry this out. And when uh, I come back, oh, there's a Batmobile in here. Forgot about that. This is a uh, slot car I'm working on of the Batmobile. Anyway, we're gonna dry this out and uh, I'm gonna try to do a, a rough assemble of the uh, interior so you can see it. Okay, this is quite a journey already just, just doing this because uh, I'm learning stuff. As, I've seen this movie at least 100 times. Uh, like Tom Hanks, I can recite the dialogue from it. Uh, I've seen it so many times. So I'm looking at these pictures and I'm looking at this sort of little lines all the way around in the door. And if you look at these, they don't have them. Now I'll put it in the light. They're not there. And that's because they're on the door. So don't make a mistake like I could have made because what happens is, is that, let me get this inside here. There, now, now the ribbing, and it doesn't fit very well, but there it is, but you'll be able to deal with that, get it just right. You have to cut out this door. If you're gonna have one of the doors open so you have this detail on the inside, which really kind of changes the way things all go together because I was having a hard time figuring out why this, and I know it's the right size, why it sits so high when it's level. It fits right to, to there. It's a little tiny bit off, but it's not bad. And the reason it sits high is you can see in this picture here that it also sits high. It's above the edge of the door, and this is the door retracted right here, and these are the rails coming out, and this is below the floor. All this sits flush. This pad, it's on with the floor, so it's, it's, there's quite a recess here. So in order for there to be that recess, this has to sit up pretty darn high which explains why there is where it fits. Now it all makes sense to me. I, I couldn't figure it out before, but now I do because that book has been so helpful. So um, what I'm gonna do here, and George is making some parts for me for back here uh, in the, the little pads that the little turntables that it will sit on. Here's another one here, these go inside here, and we're gonna make a little, little. these will be retracted, this one's gonna be out. I'm sorry, it's hard to see, isn't it? Like so, so. And so this is what I'm gonna do, and this is really critical, and I'm gonna get plenty of light on it. 
I'm just going to go around and score it very slowly because you don't want to cut into that detail and lose it. Now, if I'm right, this will work. Because after all, it is just styrene. And styrene likes to crack along a score and come out even, he says knowingly. Now, I've been around it a couple of times already. I mean, the other thing you do is, is uh, drill some holes and open up a bigger hole and try to do it that way. I'm trying to do it this way, but it doesn't look like, it looks like the plastic is too thick to actually accomplish this. I'm not even coming through the back side. So that means it's time for the big guns. So I'm going to use the Dremel tool. Dremel tool. And get a hole in it here. And I might be able to, now I have a place to grab it and whale on it. Uh, we can get some, some pliers here, some kind, needle noses. These are not what I had in mind. George, you got something handy. I need some needle noses. I need some needle nose pliers. Ah, perfect, here we go. Let's we'll see if this works. No, it doesn't. No, it kind of does. No. It just, I scored it really well, but it just doesn't seem like it wants to, to break. And I'm really worried about damaging it. So what I have to do is keep going around this way. I was hoping I could score it because you can do a much cleaner job that way. I'm going to grind this down and we'll come back in a second and show you this piece. So now I'm going to use one of these files and this one's slightly rounded on the back. It's not uh, flat and I'm going to go in here and this is why I really don't like doing it this way. Uh, it's really, you know, if I could score it, it right on that line, it would break so clean and nice. But uh, I really wish that these details would have been part of and if I was to tell Movi is something I'd like to see done differently on this model, this would be one. And is to simply have this detail be part of, uh, of the hull in the front. So, and the door is separate. I thought that's what these were, and it, as it turns out, they're not. So it's gonna be a little hard to get this just right. I can still see some edge that I didn't get. And, uh, it's really hard to see. It almost might be worth it to primer this first. But I'll try to get this one in so I can show you what's going on. At least, um, I may come back to this later, but at least get it like pretty clean right now. Um, boy, it really is. You can see it's just not straight and even the way it should be. But I don't want to lose those little de those little raised details, so I'm going to go in from the back here. So I'm not going to try to even this out. Really would have done this different if if it were me. I'm not quite. They, maybe they had good reason for doing this because of the way the production model is done, but I can't be sure of that. I don't know the owners. It's a little cleaner. I mean, eventually it'll just be perfect, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and stick this in here, and I and I can later goes in that little notch right there, and I'm going to go ahead and take some styrene glue because I can always get in there later. Uh, it's here somewhere. Oh, there it is. The table is starting to get messy. And this stuff sticks like gangbusters. 
not Ghostbusters, Gangbusters. And now before it goes off all the way, I'm gonna try to get that just centered, just perfect. It's already going off pretty good. That's a pretty good fit. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. I still need to do some sanding on it, but that needed to be in there first uh, to get a great idea of how, you know, how this is all supposed to work. And it's starting to make a lot more sense to me now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just for uh, smiles and grins, <laughs> I'm gonna put in these other two doors. Thankfully, these don't have to be open. Although, when he went out to get pool, he went out to this door, the center door, didn't he? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. The space button number three was the one. Right. Yeah, okay, good. That's very convenient considering what I just did. <laughs> <laughs> so these glue in like so, and I'm just gonna tack them in now so we can get a, a nice effect. I'll use a little bit of this in case I wanna remove them later. It doesn't take much. And then making sure that they're, they don't fit perfectly inside. So, you know, if I get it like right there, then I have to use minimal putty and I have to be very careful when I do the putty because uh, you'll lose these lines inside there. Another reason I would have made that part uh, already part of this and have the door separately. Uh, but so what you'll have to do is go in there with magnifiers and, and just put a little bit of squatter in there very, very carefully and wipe it off immediately and dig out those. And just, it's a pain in the... But uh, there you go. So I'm gonna put this one in. And they tell you in step one to do everything I'm doing right now, so. And you really just only need a little bit of that because it will run all the way around. They call it the capillary, capillary action. There we go. You see, I have a little over leakage there, which you have to be careful of. You see, that's in, so. Okay, so that's in. This ring is in. Um, this goes in there like that. You see how little we're gonna be able to see in there. We're doing all this work, but that's, so that's okay. So, uh, okay. Now on this, and George is making parts for me. He makes me this wonderful little piece here, which will fit over this and give us that graded effect. That's really cool, George. That's perfect. You wanna like make more of those and put them on there? Cause I think that's like absolutely ideal. And then we need to paint them black, of course. Uh, okay, uh, what was I gonna do? Oh yes, now I need to look in this book and I can see, wow, these are all raised and there's like this black stuff. So uh, the floor is almost entirely black. Uh, there's some other angles of this floor in here that we were just looking at earlier. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some black tape to the floor here to get that effect. I had, I had some just like flat matte black tape had, but this stuff will work good. And let's see. We're just gonna have to take our best shot. I know that those uh, walk down pads have it. So I'm just going to uh, literally just kind of cut some of this electrical tape off here and then put it on this surface like so. And take a straight edge, kind of eyeball it, and cut. Darn it. I believe that goes kind of like this. Wasn't it, George? Okay, some real progress here with the interior. I'm really pleased George has been helping me. He's been doing a fine job. And this is what we have uh, 
it's really lighting up neat and looking like the real thing. So, um, and this padding around here uh, was George's idea. We used uh, this type of styrene right here. It's a little on the big side, but I was able to cut it. And you know, from this distance, I mean, it really looks like the interior. I'm gonna put this up there. There's the those. It just actually fits so good. It just sits there. Look at that, George. So this will now, uh, theoretically, I'm gonna stick a little tape on the bottom. I've been using the aluminum tape to hold the parts together because. Um, I can adjust it better and it holds so well that I don't even think we need to use anything else. I could be wrong about that, but if I need to get it apart, I know I can certainly do that. So I'm gonna just kind of tape this in here temporarily. Um, come on. And that kind of holds it in fairly well. Uh, Wait till I get the lights in there. You know me, I love the lights. So now, this should all just fit in here like magic. It's a pretty good fit, I have to admit. These seem like they're sitting a little bit high, but they are in fact not. And there's our, our lovely interior in there, all lit up. Uh, we have to put the Howl workstation in there. But that's pretty darn good. Uh, George, what do you think? Looks good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, and it does, this floor, does in fact sit up that high. This, with these little pads on it, sits down lower, about that, about that far, and, and comes out over that. So the pods should just clear that, uh, which they do, I believe. So I'm working on a HAL workstation, and I'm cutting it out of styrene. I'm using a cut and fold technique. Uh, that's gonna go about here. Uh, and I'm basing it on the pictures I have from the two books here. Uh, and right now what I want to do is that there's these, you can see the lights there that are glowing. And I think, oh, you know, it's a light, I gotta light it up. And you might see it. So I'm taking some clear PETG, I've frosted it, and now I'm gonna put a piece of tape across it here, because that's where the howl uh, goes, like that. And we're gonna give that a fold. And I'm gonna cut this. So I am gluing this little Howl workstation benchy wenchy thing together. And you can see I've got this angled and I'll be able to put a strip light behind that and make those glow. Uh, that's gonna go there like so, which looks pretty cool. Um, I'm kind of waiting for this glue to dry a little more, although it does glue pretty fast. Now, Hal, which I won't have time to do today, unfortunately, he, uh, he sits up kind of at an angle over this, and so I have to build something in black plastic like that and then have a little thing in it with the eye. But uh, for now, what I'm gonna try to do, just to uh, give the effect of that, is I'm gonna cut this piece of plastic. It might even work, because again, we're not gonna be able to see behind it or around the side of it, so uh, it's about that thickness, <laughs> guessing, as I do. Cut a piece of styrene. You know about how to cut styrene, right? You cut it, side, uh, you cut it, uh, you put a score in it, and it'll break right on the score just when you flex it. Uh, so here we go, uh, so that's, uh, Actually, that could be a little wider. Just a wee bit. Okay, so we'll do another one. No big deal. Like so, like so. Looking at the piece I have. So, and this is, this is all eyeballing. I'm not using any measurements or anything because again, I just feel you're not gonna see that much of it. So, and had I been thinking, I would have done this whole thing uh, with, with black tape instead of, I mean with the black styrene instead of the tape. So 
I kind of like the tape, though. It's got a nice look to it. Okay, uh, after much cussing and yelling and shouting and messing with stuff, I ended up getting this, which looks pretty darn cool. And it can be lit up. I'm gonna put a couple of LEDs behind here. I'm also gonna drill through this and, and put a little screen here and a little red eye for Hal, just in case you can sort of catch it inside. So this will go like so in here. And I'm noticing that that reaches the ceiling, so it actually is going to have to be a little lower, I guess. Uh, yeah, I might have to drop this whole thing down a bit. But you get the idea. I'm going to have that in there like that. So it looks really, really neat. Uh, I'm going to temp temporarily tape it in. I wonder if I can get this loose. So, after much uh, cussing and, and fighting and stuff, now I got it in to be the right size. A little grinding, a little more black plastic, and a little bit of this and all of that, and you got a really nice little interior going there. Isn't that cool? And I'll be able to light up those lights as well. Now, where this is all supposed to go is in here, magically, he says. Um, and the actual floor sits very high. Let's so get this to this. Yeah, the floor, the floor sits very high because the actual pads sit down low inside. And then there's the, uh, this stuff here, the rails, which we're gonna put in underneath here. And when they're underneath here, you can see that this puts those rails just above the edge of this, exactly the way it is in the film. And it kind of threw me for a while because I'm thinking, that this floor should be level with the bottom of this, but in fact, no, it's it's not. And the pod will just clear this, it's coming out. It's gonna might take a little adjustment, a little lowering, but overall, um, are you getting a good view of that, Mary, when I do that? No, it was good enough. When you see? That's good. Yeah, so you can get an idea of what it's gonna look like when it's lit. So, it's, uh, I'm very pleased with how that's going together. Uh, what do you think, George? Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, and you can you can see the inside fits pretty clean to the side. So when I actually glue this in, it's going to lay in there pretty nice. Little gap up there, but you'll never be able to see it. Besides, a little gap will do you. Uh, and my nose is running. Okay. And now I've got it this closed. Uh, you can see. The configuration so the flight deck goes right up on top of here and that is what we'll be making next plus adding lights to the inside to the interior in there uh and george is going to add the the rails uh i just had those too was that that were those up there i guess it is yeah they're going to have those in there and have one of these pads out here with the little uh grid on it so just like they had in the movie. So I'm really pleased with how this is all going. I can't wait to start putting more and more of this plastic together and we'll do that next week. So that's how much I got done just having a few hours this week. I think this kit's gonna go together pretty fast. So thanks for following along. See you next week. <laughs>